In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our collect today, we asked God for inspiration to think those things that are right. And we asked for God's merciful guiding so that we will do them, to think what's right and to do them. And as I ponder that prayer, I think back on my life, gosh, I think back on last week, and I think of all the times that in fact I did think what was right and I did it. But what seems more prominent in my mind is all the times I thought what was right knew it, and didn't do it. I didn't do it. And it's hard to think about those times. And it's going to be hard to think about them in the future as I continue to stumble at times when I know what's right, but I don't do what is right. Now, when I think about those times when I haven't done what is right, I think about... What, why, why was it? Why did I not do what was right, even though I knew what I needed to do? And as I think about it, I, I kind of realize that in those times, most of the time when I can't find the courage to do what's right, are times when I feel very alone in the decision. I feel very alone. And it's harder than to do what's right. And I think today's story from 1 Samuel, one of the things it illustrates is just that. How hard it is to do what's right when you feel you are alone. When you feel you're alone in the decision. So, we have a situation the nation of Israel where God is the nation's king. Yahweh is the king. And they're in a tough place as we enter the story today. Samuel has been a judge. God would raise up judges to help with governing the nation. And throughout time, he raised up many judges, and one was Samuel. And we hear in the story today that he was a good judge, and people, the people liked him, because he put God and the people ahead of himself and made good decisions. But Samuel had gotten older, and he had appointed his sons to be the judges in Israel. And the sons aren't like their father. And the passage before what we read today, it says that the sons chased after money and power. And so they placed their own interest ahead of the nations and ahead of God's. And they were not good judges. At the same time, there's this group called the Philistines that are on the edge of the uh, nation of Israel a menacing group threatening Israel. And so you have leaders that aren't up to snuff in terms of what they need to be doing. And at the same time, you have a menacing neighbor. So the elders of Israel get together and they decide, we need a king. We need a king. And so they go to Samuel And they say, Samuel, appoint us a king, just like our neighbors have, like the surrounding nations. We need a king to lead us, to lead us into battle, to protect us, to govern us. And Samuel is upset by the request. And I think he's upset for two reasons. First is very obvious. Samuel knows that their king is God Almighty. And he's puzzled and disturbed by their request. 
somehow they've forgotten that God is their king. They don't need a human ruler. They don't need a human king. Yahweh is their king. But I think the second thing that's so disturbing about their request is that they've come to a point where they feel like they have to take matters into their own hands. The elders have made this decision. We need to have a king. And they've made the decision without considering God. And I think what's happening with these elders is they're in a place of fear, great fear. And it's because they believe they are alone. Israel is alone. God is not with them anymore. Everything looks very bleak. Their leaders aren't good. They have menacing neighbors. God must have abandon them somehow. And so I think it's from a place of loneliness and fear that these elders come and ask for a king to be appointed. Samuel takes a request to God. As we heard, God tells Samuel, you tell them what will happen if they get their king. And he tells them this awful litany of all the woes that they will experience if a human king is appointed. And we heard them, right? Their sons and daughters will be taken by the king and used for the king's purposes. They'll be impoverished. And Samuel goes and tells them, this is what will happen if you take a human king. And they say, no, we want a king. We want a king to govern us and to lead us in battle. And so God lets them have their desire. And as we know, their first king, Saul, is appointed and is a disaster. The next king, David, much better, but has his disastrous moments. Solomon, the next king, wise, very wise, but he too stumbles. And then king after king after, after in, the, in the rest of Israel's history, some are good, some are disasters. God's words come true for Israel. You know, as I think about this, and I think about... Um, when I feel most lonely in times of decisions. I think I know what it felt like to be those elders. When you feel like, you know, this is really all up to me. I've got to decide. I've got to make the right decision. It really is up to me. And I have no help in this. And I wonder what would have happened If the elders, before they went to Samuel, before they even made their decision, had stopped and considered what God wants. I wonder, when you make a decision, when a a choice is before you, do you ever pause for just a moment Just a moment to open yourself to God's presence. I'm not talking about asking God for an answer. I'm just saying, do you ever stop and just pause and understand that you're in God's presence? Because as with Israel, God is always with us. God is always beckoning us, always loving us, always sustaining us. And the question always is, are we in God's presence? God is present with us. Are we present with God? I wonder how it would be if I, when I'm faced with choices, would just take a moment to understand in whose presence I stand and then see where my decision goes. 
I might feel a bit less lonely when I'm faced with a tough decision to make. I might feel a bit less lonely and I might feel a, a bit less fearful in those times. I'm wondering if you might join with me this week to do that. When you're faced with a decision, I don't care how small or great, first thing to do is pause and open yourself to God's presence. And then decide. And then decide. And keep moving. You know, we might could focus this a bit to... um, to help us to start maybe working this in as a regular thing we do in our lives. Maybe we could focus this week just on how we spend our money. Just focus on how we spend our money this week. Everything from stopping by a Starbucks to pick up a coffee, to maybe signing a contract to purchase a house. Every financial decision we have this week Everything we are presented with, every choice we have to spend money this week, what if we just paused, just for a moment, to open ourselves to God's presence and then decide? Maybe when we open ourselves to God's presence, we might actually ask the next question, Lord, what should I do? Should I buy that coffee at Starbucks today? Or should I not? Who knows? But I think if we take a moment and just wait and open ourselves to the presence that's always with us, it might help us in our decision making. Let's pray. Gracious God, Thank you for this story about Samuel and the elders and the people of Israel. Lord, help us to pause in life, to always understand and consider in whose presence we stand always, sustained by you, loved by you in all things. Help us, Lord, to pause and understand your presence so that we might gain inspiration to think the things that are right and might receive merciful guiding from you to do them. Lord, all these things we pray in Jesus' name.